Hello spiritual individuals, and welcome back to another video. For anybody new here, my name is Trixie, and I'm an Egyptian garden witch who loves to write stories and create music. In today's video, we're going to be talking about altars, so what they are, how to use them, and tips on how to set up yours. We'll also be looking at a tour of my own altar, and how it became what it is today. So grab a cup of your favourite drink, and relax. So what is an altar? Well put simply, an altar is a sacred place where you can practice your beliefs. So whether your path is a religion, philosophy or spirituality, you can have an altar if you want to, or if it feels right for you. Now altars come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can have one on your desk, shelf, table, any place that feels right for you. Some people often keep their altars private and out of sight whilst others choose to do the opposite. So it can really be anywhere, either in the home or garden, or perhaps create an altar that is transportable, meaning you often keep it in a box, for example, and open it up wherever and whenever. How is an altar used? Many people use their altars as a place to perform spells and rituals, Others often pray or meditate at it, sometimes even grounding and centering can be done by the altar area as well. Altars can also hold all of your witchy items and supplies, so any divination tools or herbs and spices, things like that. It's sometimes used as a decorative display or even a place of worship and remembrance as well, so any deities or ancestors you like to honour can be worshipped or remembered here. Different types of altars Thanks to the power of the internet, we have discovered that there is definitely a lot more than just the two common types of altars. So you may have already seen the traditional ceremonial altar, or perhaps the Wiccan altar. But nowadays we have so many different types of altars that it's difficult to give an exact number as to how many there are. In my opinion, an altar can contain whatever you want and that each altar specifically resonates with that person's vibes and beliefs. It is basically a reflection of you and your chosen path. I just also want to say that these videos online that tell you about what to have on your altar, in other words, this is what it's supposed to look like, or there's only one way, please don't listen to them. Especially those ones where they say, buy this and you'll be a proper witch. Because put simply, that is complete balderdash, which is English slang for nonsense. You do not need all of these items to be a proper witch. But now that that side rant is over, we can now continue with the rest of the video. Okay, so we're now going to move on to the altar tour now. But before we begin, I'd just like to mention that yes, it is in my bedroom and I know I will probably get comments on that because of some magical association tied to it. I think it's to do with the fact that it just reflects negativity or something, but nothing negative has happened in almost the three years that I've had this altar. So I'm leaving it where it is. <laughs> so today I'm just gonna be showing this altar here right next to me and the one above it, but the very top shelf has just been cleared. So it's kind of empty at the moment and I haven't really got much on it so I don't really like showing unfinished pieces of work and that includes also the garden altar as well and I'm going to save the garden altar for when I do the garden tour which is next year because this year the garden needs a lot of work on it so it's a sort of project for myself that I want to make it look more presentable before I give the tour so I hope that's okay but yeah let's begin with this altar here. This altar is sort of like a divination slash shadow work slash any bits of writing of notebooks and stuff because in the very corner I've got a divination notebook where I write down all of my tarot or oracle readings or things like that and then next to it I've got a grimoire so I write all my spells and rituals in there. Then I've got a dream journal which I just recently got and I really love the design of it. Absolutely big fan of fantasy styled mushroom art. 
And then right next to that, we've got the shadow work notebook. So this is a notebook for any shadow work that I'm doing, which I kind of did start for like a couple of minutes and then I sort of gave up. So I need to get back at that because I'm not very good at shadow work, to be honest. Then right next to that, we've got my pendulum board, which was handmade. So quite a lot of my items are handmade or crafted. Other items I just find in the garden or when I'm out and about and collect them as well. I do buy a few items, but most of the things that I work with I've either created myself or I've found either in the garden or the house or just out and about really. Next to that I've got all of my guidebooks. So I've got this blue little notebook here which is for the runes and also my magpie oracle and the Egyptian glyph stones. Then we've got the guidebooks, so there's an oracle guidebook. Next to that is an angel oracle deck and then we've got my mushroom tarot deck which I'm in love with. It's so beautiful. I love all of the designs, they're so unique and beautiful and I love how the guidebook also shows the pictures in colour because quite a lot of guidebooks have their pictures in black and white and it is quite difficult to see the details and all of that in the book. So uh, when it comes to actually finding the card in the book, it's much easier when it's in colour. And then lastly, we've got this little packet of, I think they're palmistry cards, but you flick through them and it's sort of like a deck of cards that tell you about palmistry. So it's information and stuff, which is really useful because a little while back I was interested in palmistry and I'm thinking of going further into that because it's quite an interesting topic actually. And then we've got my little, I think it's a snowflake obsidian crystal and it's supposed to help you connect with your shadow self and to do shadow work so I've sort of left it there to remind me of that. Moving on we've got my electric candles. I'm a big fan of electric candles because uh, they will never burn down which means I never had to replace them except for of course the batteries. They actually look really realistic and they don't set fire to anything so that's really useful especially the fact that I've got hanging ivy everywhere and I don't really want to catch that on fire. And at the moment it's because it's during Inbulk we've got my little Inbulk doll there which is so cute. I think I made it, I said in my Inbulk video that I made it last year but actually it was sort of two years ago now. I'm a little bit behind in time at the moment. And then we've got this sort of uh, steampunk pictures. I found them on Amazon actually. There's loads of them. You can get like a fox or a rabbit. And in the middle is a little symbol dedicated to my matron and patron deities. So for those of you who don't know, I am an Egyptian garden witch. And I do work actually as well as with Egyptian deities. I work with Greek and Nordic deities. Yeah, I, I work with all kinds because uh, I'm very open-minded and I love working with their energy and their energy works well with me. So <laughs> that's just it really. And I've also got on this altar, it's like this black felt fabric. I find it's really good if you, because it, it's quite difficult when you spread cards on it the first time around, but once you do it like a couple of times, it becomes really smooth. And so it's quite nice to have a little piece of cloth there for when you're putting on your nice pretty cards and all that, especially with tarot and oracle, it's quite nice to have it not go on anything dirty or too rough because you don't want to damage the cards. So I find felt is really good fabric. And then these last two things here, I've got a protection sigil that I made. So this protects the entire altar area and I can either trace over it with my finger or I can just look at it and sort of visualize a circle forming around me so it protects the space which is really handy because often I forget to put up a circle whenever I'm doing uh, readings or rituals or things like that and this is just basically a coaster because <laughs> I put my drink here before I go to bed because you probably notice in a couple of my other videos that my bed is actually right here but it has a ladder so it's lifted off the ground because I like sleeping in the air and it's actually at the perfect height so I can sit on the bed and do any kind of work on this altar so it's really nice and comfortable because I can also just lie down for meditating or grounding so it's really handy and I absolutely love it. Moving on, we do have a few blank spaces behind me there's actually a picture of a skull here that I framed I found it in 
one of those adult colouring books where I sort of thought it's too nice to colour in. So I cut around the edges and then I glued it onto some sort of black card and framed it and I sort of dedicated it to Persephone's area. Because I don't know if you can see, but this is Persephone's area and this is Hecate's area. So they often work together. There are a few blank spaces that I've left because um, I haven't actually made anything for them yet. And then I forgot to mention also in that corner as well is a little area for NYX. So you can't really see the black card at the moment, but silence. <laughs> you can't really see the black card at the moment, but if you shine a candle to it, so electric hopefully, uh, it actually sort of shines and shimmers at night. So it's a really sort of magical, beautiful thing to look at at night when you show a candle to it and it lights up. It's actually meant to be an owl picture. I don't know if you can see it clearly. And then to the left of it is some stars and a crescent moon. So these are sort of symbols associated with Nyx. But what I like about this altar as well is that it's clear most of the time. So I can easily work on it and it's sort of like a working divination altar because you can have different types of altars as well. Ones where it's uh, more of a decorative display or a place of remembrance or worship or a place that you can work at or even just a place where you can put all your witchy supplies in which is effectively what my bureau is. Moving on to the, the shelf above, we've got in the corner just above Nyx's area is the phases of the moon. I find it quite handy to have little things like that just on my altar to remind me of what comes first and what you know some of the symbols look like rather than trying to find it again through my book of sh uh, books of shadows and yeah carrying on sorry there's uh, a picture of a pen media drawn deer picture I think I drew that in college but it was um, quite a while back I remember and I don't know if I can draw it again really because sometimes when I draw things it's mostly when I'm in the mood or I feel in like um, a magical arty move, mood sorry and I just I don't know if I can create that song again or that picture again it's when I'm just I don't know the word I'm looking for but it's when I'm in the mood but it's more than that so yeah I find I look back at my pictures and I'm thinking how on earth did I drew that or draw that even it's just wow and to the next that we've got my Pagan Wheel of the Year. I made that as well and dangling at the shelf above is basically the four elements and the pentagram. For those of you who also want to know the difference between a pentagram and a pentacle, a pentagram is literally the five-pointed star and the pentacle is the five-pointed star in a circle. So I always remember pentacle, circle because they sound similar in the endings of that word. And then we've got, I think, is I can't really see it, I have to stand on my tippy toes. But I think, if I remember correctly, we've got the spring, summer and autumn in the background that I've created. So little cards representing the season. Because this is also Gaia's area. So there's a lot of animals, um, fake plants and little trinkets that I found in the garden or that I've crafted. So for example, these two ones here, they are made out of a pine branch that I found or rather uh, it snapped off a pine tree that I have in the garden because there was some children who walked by because I'm in between like two schools or something so there are children that go by and then they swing on the branches and unfortunately it's snapped so I waited until all of the nutrients were absorbed back into the tree and then I just snipped it off and made two ones out of it and also there's another tool in my bureau but I've completely forgot what you call them but you bang the two sticks together to call upon spirits and stuff. So I had that with whatever was left of the branch, basically. And then recently I've put on the altar some potion bottles. So they are filled with any spells, like there's a grounding potion here that I made during Yule. There's also a prosperity potion, a self-love potion, self-care potion. And then the last one is kind of a spell, which I've, don't really want to say online because it's a bit of a private one but yeah they hopefully will contain little spells where 
you know, for example, the prosperity one, I can just shake it and call upon well, the spell that I made for it. Moving on, we've got some more decorative items. So this shelf is kind of more of a decorative display as well as a place to put all of my witchy items. So my tarot deck, oracle deck, runes, Egyptian glyph stones and a magpie oral oracle, sorry. <laughs> and anything else that I use for divination wise is all in that little area here. And then moving on, we've got some more decorative stuff here. So as I said before, I'm a big fan of fantasy mushroom art. So this, I actually, I created it and then I coloured it in with felt tip pens and I've got some more elemental pictures. So this is very a decorative display, changing with the season and representing the garden witchcraft side of my path. To this side we've got some Egyptian hieroglyphs that I, I think I actually traced those ones because they were really difficult to draw. And above that is the shelf that I was talking about recently that I've basically cleared up. I've dusted it all and wiped it down and I've just started adding things to it. So I unfortunately won't be showing that shelf today because as I said before, I don't really like showing unfinished pieces of work. But it's basically going to be a altar for representing and worshipping or like remembrance of my Egyptian deities because I work with a lot of them in my craft. So another reason why I have the sign in the middle is because Aset, or Isis as you know her, is the matron deity of the Egyptian side of things, and then Gaia is the matron deity for the Greek or garden witch side of things, and then Odin at the bottom is the patron deity for any Nordic deities I work with. I only work with two at the moment, which is uh, Freya and Odin. But yeah, that's why those three are in the middle, because they sort of represent the leaders of each of the deities I work with. And Gaia is sort of like a, an overall matron deity. She, she kind of has like the final word whenever I'm doing divination readings. So yeah, now we're going to move on to the bureau area. Okay, so to begin with, we've got this lovely green sort of surface on here, which is really lovely to write on. And then the rest of this is mostly any ingredients or stones and crystals that I use for my spells and rituals. So this is the place to go where I'm either studying and working or I'm crafting a potion or a spell, in other words like making a spell. So this is a place where I gather up all the ingredients that I need and just a place where I reflect as well because I often reflect and pray at the other one but also this one and I'm so happy about this bureau because I've been waiting I think it was about an entire year that I've been trying to look for one and I tried looking online but they were all too expensive and painted wood and not really what I was looking for but I found this one and I'm absolutely in love with it and it's got that really beautiful strong bureau smell which if anybody's owned a bureau you know exactly what I'm talking about because it's a certain kind of smell where it's only associated with bureaus so for example you know when you get like a new book and it has that new book smell it's kind of like that where it's only that smell is only associated with that thing or object and even like an old book smell as well so yeah it's really beautiful and empowering and behind this we've got if there's this craft wire, craft wire, sorry, that I've used, and I've also used the same material for the elements as well that you saw on the other altar. So craft wire is really good. You can get it in local garden centres or craft shops, and I got mine. I think it was in a garden centre because they have like a craft section, but it's really cheap to get, and you can basically bend it into shape because it is basically wire inside but it is really useful when you want to create little symbols and stuff so I have that and behind it are all sorts of crystals so particularly when I'm working here I just take whichever crystal sort of resonates with me at that moment in time and then I can pop them to the side either but, you know, there or there or in the middle. I can have more than one as well. And I usually have 
the little electric candles as well. I recently got these ones if you've seen my Yule video. I got them at that time. Um, they haven't actually got any batteries in yet, but once they do, I can turn them on and I can pop them here. And I can basically work with my crystals and my candles and such a really nice witchy atmosphere. And I even got in the corner as well is, uh, I think this is solidite here. And then in the other corner is labradorite, I think that's how you say it. But they are so beautiful and I have a heart for each corner. And then I think to this little corner here, we've basically got mini potion bottles full of herbs and spices and stuff. So this is for any, you know, ingredients that I need for spells or anything like that. I think I've got some, some sage and basil at the front there. And then I've even got rose petals, some salt, eggshells, cinnamon sticks. I think there's also bamboo leaves, just little bits and pieces that I found that I use in my spells and rituals but I've also put the most common herbs and spices or little things like that then in the middle the tree of life cauldron here and I was so happy when I got this because I can now put in a little incense cone and you can even see the smoke rising out of it and it just looks so witchy aesthetic like and I absolutely love it and also the tree of life symbol is very sacred to my path it sort of represents both sides of my path. I mean, it even represented the Buddhism path that I went on because of the, I think it's called the, the Bodhi tree. It's the tree that basically Buddha sat underneath to reach enlightenment. But there's that tree and then there's the tree of life in the Egyptian side of things. And I mean, you've even got it on a necklace here. There's another one here to the side. I've got one there with all of the chakra stones on them and on the top here as well we've got my Egyptian themed skull. When I got it I, I got it online and I wasn't too sure if it would turn out as like plasticky and sort of crap but I'm glad to see that it's resin and it actually feels and you know doesn't smell funny. It feels like a proper skull even though it's like a, a fake one so I'm not a big fan on using real items, especially when it comes to bones or flowers. I do occasionally use real flowers, like rose petals or lavender or the dried herbs and spices. Anything really that you can dry. And I also pick out flowers that have been, you know, fallen off the stalk or that are just laid there on the ground or that appear in front of me. I don't really like chopping off bits and pieces or if I do it's very rarely because I like to leave those for the bees and butterflies and things like that. So yeah I mean even have some rose petals here but these were from uh, store-bought roses so they are deliberately cut or grown to be cut. And then we've got some thick ivy here and this is also where I keep my silvery pink ribbon as well. So. If you haven't seen my previous video, I talked about this being wrapped around my hand to represent all kinds of things in my craft. And it's mostly when I do spells and rituals and things like that. I sort of remind myself of my Egyptian path as well because of the Egyptian mummies being wrapped in bandages, you know, for the dead. So it reminds me of all of that. But also because I find them to be really witchy looking ribbons and I, I've always found like a fascination with them so yeah there's just something that I do for my spells and rituals that sort of reminds me of my path but also connects with it and just looks pretty to be honest and then next to it was the pine sticks that I was talking about how I would tap them together and they would make like a really lovely echoey wood instrument sound and this is for calling on any spirits or protecting the place. And then lastly, on the outside, we've got a Connect With Nature Oracle card. So this is actually from a fairy deck. I also have the season cards from the same deck as well. But it says you're rejuvenated and inspired by spending time outdoors. And the title is Connect With Nature. So this always is like a nice reminder for myself to go and connect with nature and then to the left of that we've got my Tibetan singing bowl and I've only 
just recently figured out how to make it sing and when you tap it with this I don't know if you can hear it you then go round quite firmly actually so I don't know if you can hear it let's try It's a really lovely sound and I find it helps me get into a meditative state and all that. And I saw it was on an Alwyn Oaks video, her most recent one, that she had one too. So I thought, oh, it's so cool because um, I had mine for quite a while as well. So it's quite nice to see that I'm not the only one who has one. Uh, but yeah, and then lastly in this drawer is my mala beads or Buddhism prayer beads. So I use these whenever I'm meditating with a mantra, so I won't give away too much information because I'm actually doing a full video on the different types of Buddhism tools and techniques. But you would hold it with your second finger and thumb, and you'd start here, and you'd say a mantra, and each time you say the mantra you then go into the next bead, and then so on and so forth. So it's like a, a rosary, a Christian rosary. And he also has the seven chakra stones as well, which I'm a big fan of. I've been meaning to look up more chakra work because I've recently got a book on that. And then eventually when you go all the way round, you don't go over the big bead. You actually have to swivel it around like so and then continue on like that. So I'll show in better detail in my actual video. But yeah, this is really good for concentration when you're trying to meditate. And then lastly, if we just pop everything back in, there's some drawers underneath as well. This also did come with a lock, but I don't really lock it because nobody really comes snooping in. I mean, although I live with someone, I trust them and they don't go looking through my stuff and all that, so yeah. And this drawer is basically full of any candles or bowls. Um, I've also got my mirror here and any like spare bits and pieces that I need for spells that I thought would clog up the top half because I wanted to keep top half as sort of clear as possible. That way I didn't have any distracting things or I wanted to keep it clear so I could work on it basically. And then I think in this drawer, yeah, those are all the incense sticks as well. So I just got a whiff of that. <laughs> it smells so nice. And then in this drawer, that's all my summery and spring stuff. And at the final drawer, yeah, that's all wintry and autumn stuff. So this is basically a place where I put all of my decorative items for the other altar. Uh, a place to store them when I'm not using them. Any bits, uh, extra bits and pieces that I use in my craft but don't really have a place on, on the altars because I don't really want to put packets of candles and stuff on my altar. But I'm in love with this bureau. <laughs> I've always wanted one and I'm so glad I got one and I'm so glad I got to show it to you today as well. And then right behind you is my staff. So that was actually crafted from a tree branch that I found in the woods that I often go exploring in. I found it there and put some ribbons and craft wire on it. So the craft wire is basically the handle that you can see and then it's got a little bell on it which I actually got from you know those Lindor chocolate where they have the little bunny rabbit and the Santa Claus. I think it was a bell from the bunny rabbit so I just took it off there and then sort of glued it onto the staff. I had to glue I think some craft wire, wire first with PVA glue and then I sort of tucked that in and then glued it because when I tried gluing the actual fabric part of it it just wouldn't stay on so yeah I had to get quite inventive when I got there and I even drew some symbols on it for the elements or stuff that was very sacred to my path so yeah I think that's all of it I've got a tree here um that was my yule tree but when I turn off the lights it just looks like an ordinary ornamental tree 
so it's quite nice to have a bit of greenery in the house and because it's fake as well but looks pretty realistic I can have it up all year round and I've also got ivy <laughs> all over the place so yeah this is sort of my witchy sanctuary where I keep everything and even my witchy books and this space is also blank and this is also a doll's house I'm thinking of maybe putting a bookshelf at the top and just you know having all my witchy books there and then I'll probably have some hanging stuff uh, more vines or ivy coming from the shelf and then I'm not really sure what to do for the wall space I may put some pictures and stuff on but yeah hopefully in because I'll do like an update alter tour in like two years time or something when everything's all sorted out so yeah I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today and uh, let me know in the comments what your favourite part was and all of that. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a lovely magical day and bye for now. Good intent and